Uh, first question, uh, what's your name and what do you currently work on? My name is Chen Lu. I currently work on Messenger.com, which is the chat system for Facebook pulled apart. And uh, before that, I was working on the um, React core team for a while, twice. Um, how long have you been working with React? Um, I actually got uh, hired because of React. I started React w w right after it was open sourced, uh, around two years ago. And uh, they just thought, it, you know, while I was working on the documentation and then gradually more into the core of React, they thought it w was a good idea to, to just hire me and directly work on it at Facebook. So that's what happened. So at the, the conference, uh, what was your talk on? My talk is on animation. Um, my coworker Spencer also did animation last time and uh, uh, last uh, yesterday. So my goal with uh, this talk is to really put the challenges out there and to, in in some way, impress the folks so that they can actually realize, you know, how much you can do with a with a more powerful animation API and, and everything, and uh, make them make them realize also the shortcoming of their current paradigms. So this way we can all work together as a community rather than just. Um, you know, wrapping up uh, I existing libraries, which do get you 80% uh, of the way there, but not more than that. Uh, and uh, this is my goal, basically. You said um, you work on, was it messenger.com? Yes. What, uh, what kind of problem is that trying to solve, and how is it doing it uh, sort of in a new or unique way? Well, I'm not sure how much I can tell uh, um, um, related to this aspect. Uh, I'm the engineering part, of course. So on Messenger.com, we have um, we basically use uh, React, 100% um, React. Basically, it's a new application. Uh, most development at Facebook happens to be on React now, and uh, we're gonna be using. And this is probably uh, of the interest to many people. We're gonna be using uh, GraphQL and Relay. Though not now, because the messenger infrastructure is still uh, is still old, and we're just gradually trying to improve it. And hopefully, I was actually thinking that uh, if I work on this long enough, I can do a talk on like how like, how a new Facebook product actually uses uh, React. That would be interesting because you don't see a you know a new Facebook uh, web application appear every time. So that could be. All right. Um, one question I've asked a lot of people is in, in working with React. Um, what sort of insights is that given to you in software development and about how we do it and, and sort of the best ways of approaching it? Um, a bit of a side topic, I guess. Um, there are React books coming out, for one, uh, just like uh, any other uh, popular framework. But I, I've actually always wanted a book that describes like the, the origin of React and the, the thought process behind the multiple, like dozens of failures before actually arriving at React. I think that's... Uh, especially in the case of React, that's very relevant to the JavaScript community in general. Because uh, as you know, two years ago when React got released, it got very bad press, almost universally negative press on uh, most of the site I've seen actually. And uh, it's been a paradigm shift. Um, and the interesting, uh, in interesting thing is that now that we've we've basically said, you know, uh, inline CSS is the way to go, which is basically the, uh, the opposite of the, <laughs> a good practice, the good uh, traditional practice, uh, people don't seem to rebel that much anymore. Maybe because we already got the credibility and they stay more open-minded. So one, asset, uh, one, one uh, aspect of that um, to, to answer your question is uh, definitely the community, uh, the community, the, it's becoming more open-minded and this allows us to do, to do much more things without getting in the way of, you know, PR and other stuff. Uh, technically speaking, and personally speaking, allow me to grasp how um, how how different a render could be, how different the paradigm could be. Um, for example, immutability, which will we will gradually use more and more in, in core React, and how this can help uh, architectural ap applications. And these things are uh, in traditional programmers' eye, they are very um, uh, counterintuitive. How can immutability improve performance when you have to naively, you know, deep clone everything or just keep a copy somehow? And it's it's uh, it's very weird. And the way React does things, it's it is very weird still, right? It's uh, re-rendering at the uh, the the whole sub subtree. But you s if you think about it, this is actually a pretty old paradigm, like version control. Version control is basically just that. Um, so I guess the really just I in general, it allowed me to think about things m in a m much more uh, clear way and uh, stop discarding answers uh, so fast. Thanks.
So uh, last question, what do you see in the future of JavaScript and React in the next couple of years? Um, JavaScript is basically solving a problem that other languages don't have. Uh, JavaScript runs on the web. Other language, when they, they run on the server side, you as the programmer has full control over which version you have, uh, not JavaScript. Um, and we have this uh, versioning problem in JavaScript, basically. It's, it's uh, inaccurate to say that, but we basically have uh, feature problems. And projects like um, Babel actually solve this in a very elegant way. And in that sense, ironically, we've actually um, succeeded to progress much faster uh, now and in the future than other languages. Because when a new f experimental feature comes up, uh, people can just use it and then give you your, your uh, their opinion. And if it doesn't work out, it doesn't go into the community. Um, this is a va very fast uh, iterative uh, development s uh, cycle. Kind of like list macros, but in a <laughs> JavaScript community in a very, um, on the transpiler level, basically. Thank you very much.